we're going to graph a rational or reciprocal function. And this question should be a review from your previous learning. So let us graph y is equal to uh, x plus 3 divided by x squared minus 9. The first thing that I would probably choose to do is I would choose to factor the denominator. And when I do, it's a difference of squares, every teacher's favorite. What I'm able to see is that I have two restricted values, that x cannot be equal to 3 or negative 3. And that's going to be fairly important. However, I do notice that we share a common factor of x plus 3, both in the numerator and the denominator. So now I see y is equal to 1 over x minus 3, where x cannot be equal to negative 3 or positive 3. Now, we've taken a look at it from a transformation perspective. Generally speaking, for the function, now I'm only going to write this down, for the function y is equal to 1 over x, we know that we have a vertical and horizontal asymptote at x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. However, this is three units shifted over to the right. Now, it should not come as a big surprise to you that if I shift the, the vertical and horizontal asymptotes, in fact, I get the same asymptotes as the previous learning. Well, that's good. Math works in multiple ways that we look at it. There. So, this is all very good, and I could graph, so I guess, what is it doing in the middle of reciprocal functions? I suppose I could graph y is equal to x minus 3, and then I could take the reciprocal of the graph y, um, but I'm not going to choose to do that. Instead, I'm just going to pick x values that seem to make sense, and find out those y values. So I'm going to make a table of values. Um, so the x values that I would choose, probably uh, 0, 2, and 2, or sorry, 3 on the negative side. And when I say 3 on the negative side, I really mean uh, 2.99. I would also graph 3.01, which represents 3 from the positive side, um, 4, and then 8. If I plug in 0 into my function, I get negative 1 third. If I plug in 2, I get negative 1. If I plug in 2.99, now I'm going to take the um, sign test here. My positive or my numerator is going to be positive. My denominator is 2.99 minus 3 is going to be negative, so overall this will be negative. So asymptotically, my graph will be approach negative infinity. So if I just simply graph those points here, I can see what the left-hand side of my graph looks like. So that's what that left side of the asymptote looks like. I'm going to take a look at the right side of the asymptote. And so I'm going to pr approach positive 3 from the positive side. And what we notice is the numerator is positive. The denominator, when I take a look at it, uh, 3.01 minus 3 is going to yield a positive. Overall, this is going to be uh, positive. So as it approaches 3 from the positive side, I know my graph will approach positive infinity. So I'm just going to put a symbolic point right there. It's not literal, it just helps me graph this out. I plug in the value when x is equal to 4, my y value will be 1. When x is equal to 8, my y value is 1 fifth. I'm just going to plot those points, and what you'll see is that, to me anyways, since I've put in the hard work of rational, fu or rational functions, it's just much easier to graph this function in this manner. So let us not forget here. You know, I should have probably put this under highlighter so I don't forget. Now, what does this mean? It means that x can't be equal to negative 3 or positive 3. So if you forgive me, I'm going to cheat a bit. I'm just going to pretend that my function went on a little bit over here. How would you graph this? Well, simply, 
you would graph it exactly as the function. You would probably take your eraser and make sure that you write a point of discontinuity at negative 3. And that's all there is for rational functions. I mean, we did put a, probably three, um, three days worth of very, very, very hard work into it. Allow me to go up to another example up here. This one. This one was kind of, I'm just going to change the question ever so slightly. I'm going to say, imagine somebody asked me to graph y is equal to 1 over x plus 2 minus 3. Well, how do I graph that? Because it doesn't really look like a rational function that we know because this minus 3 is not um, included in the rational part of our denominator. Well, very simply, you make a common denominator. Oh yeah, that's right. So I'm going to just put 3 over 1 as negative 3. And then I just multiply it by a very special type of 1 to make sure that I put it over the, the denominator. So this function ends up being 1 over x plus 2 minus, now I'm going to distribute that, so 3x minus 6 all over x plus 2. So I can simplify that this function y is equal to negative 3x minus 5 over x plus 2. So there you have it. If you wanted to, instead of graphing this using transformations, you could change this into its rational form and then graphing. Looking at it, now you're able to see, well, what your vertical and horizontal asymptotes are.